You're listening to the Straight Crooked Podcast. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. I'm morning. Is it a good morning? Today. What? I said I'm morning today. Oh. I'm um starting my supervision so I can actually sit for my test in August. My um licensing test. Oh. And so I've been out of the house on my off days going to supervision. That's what you had to do the other day? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. And yesterday. So it's an actual sit down test with like a person watching you? In August, yeah. You have to go and do that. I thought it was online for some reason. I don't know why. but Well, it's on a computer, but you have to go to a testing center and it's proctored. You know? Right. That makes sense. Because why wouldn't you? I don't, I don't know why I thought you could be like in your home office. Like, let me take a test. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Not that lucky. And I mean, the test is like $200. So I need to get it right the first time. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but my friend just passed it and she was like, girl, it was easy. <laughs> so, oh, okay. okay. So you're Hopefully. probably going to be over prepared hopefully yes you will be (laughs) um so since we're so uh i don't know dreary dragging today i figured i'd start the first thing did you see elmo asking how everybody's doing no (laughs) i did and i feel so bad for elmo me too Poor Elmo. Everyone just um, trauma dumped on to... him. And what I feel like that's at? not fair to do to our beloved Elmo. That's not. He's such a nice guy. But I had found some, oh, it was on Instagram. I saved it. I was going to read off some responses. Oh, please do. I've always had a strong bond with Elmo. I think it's because we were both red. <laughs> Maybe. I could agree with that. Um, okay, so Elmo's tweet was, Elmo is just checking in. How's everybody doing? Precious. Washingo says, I'm at my lowest. Thanks for asking. Oh. Then Seamus Malik says, Elmo, I'm going to be real. I'm at my fucking limit. (laughs) (laughs) Then Tech at the Tech Show says, I'm not going to do this to you, Elmo. I'm going to hold it in and let you keep your peace. <laughs> and the other one, 7-Eleven Truther, Uh-oh. says, Wife left me. Daughters don't respect me. My job is a joke. Any more questions, Elmo? Jesus, man. <laughs> Stop attacking Elmo. <laughs> He's being so nice trying to ask how Look we at are. This. this is so funny. Oh, I got to put it in front of me. Oh, no. Oh, no. It says <laughs> Elmo checking in. <laughs> that's exactly how it is <laughs> whose idea was it to to say all these things to poor elmo i know but we just ruined his childlike spirit i know it's really sad we should um join the conversation and say some good things yeah i don't have a i don't have a twitter or x or whatever you want to call it now did you see his like elmo's follow-up tweet no so it's this cute little picture of Elmo and his little stuffed animal. And it says, wow, Elmo is glad he asked. Elmo learned that it is important to ask a friend how they are doing. Elmo will check in again soon, friends. Elmo loves you. Hashtag emotional well-being. <laughs> Such an Elmo thing to say. Oh, he's so precious. And yeah. Oh my God. I cannot believe what the internet has done to him. I would never do that. In their defense, he asked. Yeah, but when people ask, do they really want to know? Sometimes. Sometimes they do, but... Maybe Elmo really wanted to know. Well, I hope he's okay. Can I, Maybe I should send him a DM or something and ask if he's okay. <laughs> no one asked Elmo how he was doing, did they? No. I'm going to tweet Elmo today. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Love that. 
Um, but speaking of tweets, did you see Elon Musk's house? I saw a weird TikTok and I thought it was a fake thing. Okay, so apparently he is giving up all of his properties. For why? Um, I don't know. He decided to sell his five houses and have his primary residence um, as a two-bedroom house in Boca Chica, Texas. Never heard of it. Me either. But look. Look at his house. God. Hang on. Get. 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 <laughs> Go on now. Get. Okay. What? What's that black thing? Is that a rocket? That's what it looked like. <laughs> yeah. From it's okay, so I couldn't see the picture that well. Is it just like a like a modest type house instead of one of a billionaire? It looks like my old apartment. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I mm, controversial opinion. I don't understand especially if you have money, giving up all your property and stuff like that to live in a smaller place. And maybe that's just because I've never had money like that. Um, but Yeah, well, it says, according to the cool down, that he announced on X in 2020, I'm selling almost all physical possessions, will own no house. So wow. he said that back in 2020. Um, he sold his last home, a San Francisco mansion, reportedly for nearly $30 million in 2021. So if he's not going to have any possessions or any houses, what is he going to do with all his money? That's a good question. Why doesn't he donate it then? Right. Do something good with it if he's not going to buy himself stuff. Right. He does have a plaid Tesla, which is weird. Really? Yeah. I don't... Know how I feel about that. You can't picture that. I can I picture, picture it, it, but I just don't know if I like it or not. <laughs> that is giving vibes of like JoJo Siwa having a car with her face all over it. Like <laughs> somebody said, I somehow find it disturbing when the richest man in the world does not have a bigger kitchen than me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, that's what I'm saying. Honestly, it's a very, very modest house. Yeah. Okay. Did he give a reason for why he's doing all of this? No. no Interesting. So. Okay. I mean, Good seriously, thing. if you have more money than God himself, like, just donate it. Right. You could donate a percentage of your wealth and probably feed all of America. Yep. And still have plenty for yourself. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even begin to know what to do with that kind of money. And also, he doesn't have a foundation or anything. No. Like, I don't Bill and Melinda so. Gates have something. Do they? Mm hmm I mean, you would think he would. I mean, maybe you wouldn't. I don't know. I don't know. How do we, how do we feel about him? Is he a villain or no? I don't necessarily think he is. I think he's probably looked at in a certain way because of his Asperger's, because he's very just quirky. Oh, he's on the spectrum. Yes, he is. Oh, fine. I didn't know that. Yeah. Does no. it make sense now? Yeah. I And I don't know much about him. I've just, you know, like the big headlines, obviously. Tesla, and then he like named his kid that weird combination of symbols or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, no, I think uh, he just probably doesn't get a kick out of having physical things. Yeah. You know? But if you don't, then that's fine. You donate money. Right, exactly. Hopefully he does something good with that whole situation. Yeah, but I don't necessarily see him as a villain. I think he is smart enough to be dangerous. Yeah, definitely. Not that I've like seen anything that I think makes him a villain. I just know that internet in general seems to be very divided on their stance on him. I've never really had an opinion. Yeah. So I wanted to, well, I guess I'll recap Murdoch at the end. 
That's why I'm mourning. Go ahead. <laughs> so I wanted to give you some facts about the world that will surprise the most intelligent people. Let's hear them. I'm excited. The average chocolate bar contains eight insect pieces. Mm. Mm, yummy. I don't think I wanted to know that. <laughs> <laughs> This one's kind of disturbing to me. Humans completely replace their outer skin every month. Every month? Yes. Are you serious? I thought it was like seven I guess that's years. why dust is everywhere because you're constantly shedding your skin cells. That makes so much sense because you know my little couch in my room is black. Uh-huh. And I will like vacuum, lint roll, you know, like completely clean it. And then I won't even sit on it, but it's like beside my bed. And I'll go back yeah. a couple days later and notice like a couple of like white flakes and I don't have dandruff. I'm like, <laughs> what is happening to my couch? It's literally just my skin. Okay. I don't like it. Yeah. It's kind of gross. Um, mosquitoes have killed more humans than all wars in history. There's no way. Doesn't that make oh. you afraid to go outside? A little bit. A little bit. Um, you're twice as likely to be killed by a vending machine than a shark. I don't believe that. Why don't you believe it? Vending machines fall on people all the time. Do they? Are people I like... Guess. Probably because they kick it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean, and I'm I'm definitely one of those people that's like, the ocean is the shark's home. Why are we going in and messing with them? Like, mm -hmm. just leave them alone. But I also understand how dangerous they are. And I feel like I feel like they'd be more likely to attack me than a vending machine. <laughs> vending machine has it out for you. <laughs> this one got me. The word set has the most number of definitions in the English language at 464 definitions do you have all of those for us today <laughs> <laughs> we would be here for a while man i never realized that at all yeah. it can mean a lot of things it can and our brain just automatically knows which one we're talking about usually i mean i know context helps but that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. um France was still executing people by guillotine until 1977. <laughs> no way. Should we I bring that, that back? Honestly, it's probably the best way to go. You don't even know what hit you. Right. It's over. I don't know, though. Is that one of those situations like when the chicken head, the eyes and everything are still working for a while? Yeah, but you don't know what's happening. Oh, okay. I feel like I, the anticipation would be killer once you get like put up in it. Mm -hmm. But then, like you said, you don't even know what's happening. Like, I don't want anything injected in me, first of all. <laughs> and obviously not the electric chair. <laughs> so, oh, God. That would be so terrible. No. Yeah, no. But let's bring it back. Not the electric chair. <laughs> When did they stop using electric chairs, by the way? Do we know? Probably, like, in the 80s. Okay. That's, I feel like that's not long ago enough. That's not. To be using an electric all. chair. But, dude, like, I love hearing about medieval torture things. Dude. Like. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, you know, we're making goals about little weekend trips. Mm -hmm. Ch not Chattanooga. We went there. What's the other one? Gatlinburg. The crime museum. First of all, yeah. they've got serial killer stuff there as well. But like the first part, there because there's, you know, there's all different sections. It's got the medieval torture. Like it literally starts from the beginning of time of like crime and torture and goes all the way to present day. It is incredible. That's we have so to cool. go. What else was in Gatlinburg or was it Pigeon Forge? Oh, that is that kaleidoscope a lazy river thing? Okay, all the more reason. <gasps> yeah there's i mean okay i can't i'm pretty sure it was gatlin burke where i was at but it's like just a whole strip of all the things mm -hmm. and it's there's like so many museums to choose from i feel like we would enjoy quite a few of those and i think they have like the 
package deal where you can like pick a couple for like a price or something like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe that should be our next trip. And hit up the lazy river, of course. Oh yeah, that's that's almost number one on my. But what were you about to say about medieval torture? Oh, just like where they would um tie limbs to horses like they would tie each limb to a different horse and just have them run away no and they'd way. all just like tear apart oh my god this is gonna sound so sick and twisted for me to say but i feel like i don't want to say they were doing it better back then but as far as like if it's really a bad person they had the right idea on how to handle people that and then they had this um like metal bowl and they would put them in the belly of the bowl and light a fire underneath it i think i've seen that before yeah so they would just like cook to death in there yep that's horrible that is insane (laughs) the fact that people were even especially way back then coming up with stuff like that yeah no i wish i could share some of the things i saw in the museum but that was actually fresh off of hitting my head like I think it was a week after I hit my head Mm -hmm. I remember Jeffrey Dahmer's glasses and Ted Bundy's car that's all I remember do you think they were real I would really like to think so but who really knows because I've also seen pairs of his glasses floating around the internet maybe one was before prison one and one was like his prison glasses I don't know but how do you check something like that? Like, honestly. I don't know. I'm sure he's had a lot of pairs of glasses. Very but... true. Very true. Oh, I thought this was funny. Charles Darwin was the first person who had the idea to attach wheels to his office chair to move around more quickly. No. Yeah. Natural selection, baby. Yep. Now we can roll around. <laughs> <laughs> Um, whips make a cracking sound because the tip actually moves faster than the speed of sound, creating a small sonic boom. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. That's very cool. The three most sold products in human history. Do you want to take a guess as to what one of them is? Toilet paper. No. Oh. Products. Meaning, like, anything? Yeah. The iPhone. Yes, that's one of them. Oh, um, a couch. No, I don't think you'll get the other two. Okay, you can tell me. Harry Potter books and the Rubik's Cube. (gasps) What? (laughs) Oh my god. Honestly, I love that for us. We're just doom scrolling, solving little puzzles, and reading about wizards. Yeah. I'm here for it. Notice how they're all leisure items. Yeah, thank God. Life is all about leisure, baby. (laughs) Did I tell you I wanted to start? Because I've never seen Harry Potter in full. I wanted to start all the movies, but I um, feel like I'm at a place in my life that I will get obsessed with it. So I'm a little scared. Because, you know, their merch, is. there's always something for sale. Five Mm -hmm. Below, Walmart, wherever you go, they have Harry Potter stuff. So I almost don't want to watch it at this point because I don't want to love it and then feel the need to buy all the little knickknacks. You should see the Harry Potter Lego suds. They're amazing. I actually have, it might be a kitty one. I got it from Daryl. It was Bella's. I have Uh one that I just, he was giving it away on Facebook and I was like, hey, I love Legos. I haven't put it together yet, but maybe I'll share that when I put it together. But I'm sure they have like crazy incredible ones. Legos always oh, does do. that. They gear towards Harry Potter, Star Wars, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could get into Star Wars, though, even if I tried. I just It's not my story. Star Wars was okay. I was forced to watch the movies oh. at one point, so I did watch them. Yeah. It's a little hard to follow along. Like, I had to have it explained to me a couple of times, but right. it was pretty don't, good. Don't the movies go out of order? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah, I don't love that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. A cockroach can live a few weeks without its head before eventually dying of hunger. That is so gross. <laughs> PSA. Free PSA, PSA to everyone out there. Don't just cut the head off of a cockroach. 
You got to smash that thing. Smash it. Ima- oh my god, imagine not only in your house, you go over to someone's house and you see a headless cockroach running around. What would you do? Freak out. Well, I mean, squish it. I don't even know if I would notice that it was headless. I would just see something running and be like, yeah, got to go. Exactly. Paper cuts are more painful than regular cuts because such a wound almost never bleeds. Instead, nerve endings stay open to the air, which irritates them. Oh, yeah. paper cuts are one of one of my big fears. They're up there. Ew, just like that episode of Jackass. Where Don't they... you dare. <sighs> I'm going to have to say it for the podcast. Okay, say it. I'm taking my headphones out. <laughs> where they had to do <laughs> paper cuts in the webbing of their toes and their fingers. It was so gross. Okay, I'm done. I could hear it through my headphones. <laughs> Did you know what I was talking about, though? Yes. And I fast forward so fast through that every time. I cannot. I can't do it. I don't know why. It just... <sighs> it makes me want to spread my fingers out further than I turn into Timmy. That's what it makes me want to do. <laughs> but I just... They're not spreading far enough. Oh, <sighs> I'm turning red. Ooh, paper cuts are wild. Please hold. I don't know what it was. Are you being paranoid again? Yeah. (laughs) But that one legit sounded like a car door. It it comes in ways. Like, I've been fine since last week. Um, Until last night, for whatever reason, I was convinced that I heard things. But (laughs) maybe we can go through uh, some kind of checklist or something when I come down there. A checklist for what? I don't know. To help me get through this. oh oh never mind i was no my bad i was thinking about you saying the checklist about the fear of vomit not yes the exposure therapy yep never mind i don't want to be exposed to to this fear (laughs) okay so do you want to tell us about your ted bundy survivor experience oh my goodness yes let me start by saying i actually have reached out to her now and asked her if she wants to come tell her story herself I haven't heard anything back so we'll see don't want to promise anything okay so basically a couple weeks ago I got to go hear a woman named Kathy Kleiner Rubin talk to us about not only surviving Ted Bundy but surviving like so much more this woman has had I would say she's one of the most unlucky lucky people in the world the things that she has gone through and come out on the other end Hmm. um so her story actually first starts way back when she was a little girl she was diagnosed with lupus and now i don't know if this was just a back in the day thing or if they still treat lupus this way but she was actually getting like chemotherapy to try to help oh i guess get rid of it And um, so when she was like a little girl, she was not in school. She was in home, essentially bedridden for quite some time because of her chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So she missed out on like a lot of her childhood. And then eventually she grew up and and she was fine. And she um, ended up going to college. And mm, this is why I want her on the podcast because of course some details have escaped me but I do believe she was from a part of Florida and then she went to Florida State and I want to say maybe it was like her second year of college when she decided to move into a sorority house her parents had actually encouraged it because they felt she would be safer in a sorority house rather than you know just like a dorm I guess Mm -hmm. because there's like the house mother and all of these things Um, so one night, I guess a lot of the girls were out for the night and she decided to not stay out late. Um, her roommate was also there and obviously some other girls were at the house at that time and, uh, she had gone to bed and next thing you know, she woke up because there was a noise in her room and someone had tripped over this like chest locker thing that she had sitting Mm -hmm. there. Um, So she woke up and she saw a figure standing there holding up something big. 
and he came over and started beating her with it. And um, it was 10 Bundy. He actually was at the bar, I guess, behind the sorority, across somewhere near the sorority house, there was a bar. And he had been there that night. He was dancing with some of the sorority girls, whatever. A couple of them left. So he followed them out of this bar and he hid in the bushes and he watched them go to the back door of the sorority house. Now, the back door had a code you had to type in to get in. But these girls, when they went inside, the door didn't latch. It didn't shut all the way. And he mm. saw that. Mm. So he took the opportunity to enter in through the back door. At some point, he grabbed a giant wooden log. Um, he went in to the first girl's room and he murdered her. He, um, I believe the first girl, after he had like finished whatever he was doing, he laid her back in the bed and put the blanket up over her as if she was just laying there sleeping. Mm -hmm. And then went into another girl's room and... I believe a lot, not saying worse, but more than just murder happened to this one. There was bite marks yeah. on her butt cheek, all kinds of crazy stuff. Ended up murdering her. And then that's when he goes into Kathy's room. Her roommate was also in there sleeping there, you know, on each of their beds. And so, yeah, he approached her and he hit her. She, like, blacked out a little bit, but she says she remembers feeling like she just needed to curl up in a ball and that if she made herself as small as possible, maybe he would go away for whatever reason. Forget she was there. Not I don't know. Um, but after he initially hit her, he went over and was attacking the roommate. And during this time, I guess she kind of came to a little bit. And he was coming back over to her when headlights flashed into the window. I guess their window was facing the back side of the sorority house and their parking was back there. So I think one one of the sorority girl's boyfriends had pulled in to drop his girlfriend back home. Those headlights flashed, scared Ted Bundy, and he ran out of there. And the next time she remembers anything was when the police were in there. Um, she ended up surviving and her roommate ended up surviving. The other two girls didn't. So that was that that chunk of her life and um what's crazy to me is that she has said none of the other sorority girls and the sorority itself never reached out to her after that to check on her wow yep that was like super upsetting to hear um mm -hmm. but you know after being handled at the hospital and whatnot of course she had to go back and explained to the police what happened and all that kind of stuff and she ended up testifying in court um but one of her biggest regrets is that she didn't actually get to see his face so she couldn't on the stand look at him and say like yes that is for sure the man that was in my room which obviously he still got convicted without that but she seems to feel very regretful that she couldn't do that and I think the audience was really trying to just encourage her that, like, what you did was enough. Telling your story and, like, you survived it. All this craziness. Um, but besides that, she is also a breast cancer survivor. Um, and obviously, after the Ted Bundy attack, there's so much trauma that goes with that, but especially around men. Mm -hmm. um, and she said trying to get over that trauma and like be comfortable around men again she got a job at a lumber yard which i think is so fun because it was like nothing but men yeah <laughs> um not that i think it's fun to work with men i would rather work with women anyway <laughs> and um yeah so she's just been through a lot she was also in i guess the um the zone of hurricane katrina when it happened and had to evacuate oh. her house so, yeah, again, I Damn. that is a summary of what I remember from quite a few weeks ago. Um, I, I, there's tons of things that I'm leaving out, and she would definitely tell her story better. Hopefully she can. If not, she does have a book that people can check out. But um, just to live through that many things and like come out on the other side is incredible to me. And to have like the bravery and the strength to do it because I don't know I'm not that strong of a person I feel like I would be done after about two incidences and be like you know what 
<laughs> I can't fight anymore. But it seems like all she's done is fight. And she was very sweet and kind in telling her story. And it was just, it was incredible. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really sad that I didn't get to go and um, see that. I know. But- let me use this time real quick to complain. This has nothing to do with her because she was not the person that organized this event. She was just the guest at it. Mm-hmm. It was advertised online. And we we went back and checked three or four times. It was advertised as a crime and wine. Okay. It said there will be gourmet snacks, beverages, which there was. And it it seemed like we pictured it would be little tables you can sit at and like a gourmet snack table, fix your snack, go sit at your table, drink your drink, mm-hmm. listen to the speaker. It was in an auditorium, which that's fine. Not a single snack. We didn't eat before we went because we're like, hey, gourmet, like what are, th- what are they called? My mom kept calling them something. Hors d'oeuvres. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. We were thinking like that and I was like, okay, this is not a single piece of food in sight not a piece of popcorn a peanut a candy nothing they did have an open bar not for me but they had an open bar (laughs) but no food and the money went seems to have gone to a good place is someone on murphy i'm sorry i didn't mean to yell and it's okay you hear this nonsense no (laughs) Because he was up on the lamppost. Oh. It was so loud. I didn't hear anything. He's getting on my nerves so badly. I'm wild. I hung up curtains, holes in them already. Of course. This is why we can't have nice things. Can't ever have anything nice. I hate that for you. I did it to myself. I mean, I don't know. I never imagined he would be so wild. I feel like when, right before you got him, I don't know if it was explained to you this way, but I got the vibe from you that it was like just a chill little cat. And it's like, I Mm -hmm. feel like he is so not being that. He's not chill. Opposite of chill. It's almost like in the movies when you see like, people go to an orphanage and they're like on their best behavior like i want to get adopted and then they do and like they just go like (laughs) buck wild (laughs) terrible twos or something something crazy he's only one no it's gonna get worse he's one and a half it's gonna get worse i'm just kidding that's like a kid thing right yeah i'm hoping he'll get better as he ages but we'll see he's still pretty wild I wanted to talk about the evidentiary hearing. (sighs) (sighs) I'm going through it about that. And you'll understand why we're going through it. I'm I'm sick about it. I'm sick. Yeah, same. Um, so on the very first day of the evidentiary hearing, they had jurors come in um provide testimony for questions that the judge asked um they were on the stand for about three minutes each of them um and jurors were watching the first jurors testimony on their phone live streaming it in the jury room because they did not have a bailiff watching them and they did not confiscate their cell phones which is so stupid let me just say I feel like that is so on brand for this entire case because everything from start to finish, from literally start to finish, has been a circus. Yeah. And it, like, n- th- no other case would all of these things be happening. So I was shocked, but not surprised, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah, no, same. I feel that. And um, Juror Z was the first juror to testify. And she wanted to change her answers because she was the one who said that she felt that Becky Hill had an impact on her verdict. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was the only one who said that. Um, But then they were like, well, is it her or did you feel pressure from the other jurors? And she was like, I felt pressure from the other jurors. And 
I'm thinking that that's what she wanted to change her answer about. Okay. Is to say that Becky Hill, you know, whatever. My issue is, is that even if it is not a, it, it doesn't have to be a conscious influence. Right. Just what she's saying could have an influence on them and they might not even know, like, right. realize it. Yes. So. And I believe anyway. she did. Yeah. <laughs> she, um, Becky Hill denied speaking with jurors. Um, she denied giving one a ride home. I saw that. And um, this was disputed by the other clerk of court for another county. I can't remember what county, but it was uh, Rhonda McElvey. Um And she was there during the whole trial to help out Becky because Becky was a new clerk. Um, oh yeah so Hmm. she was telling her like you can't do that you know like you can't do that but apparently it didn't escalate to the level of like misconduct or else she would have gone to the judge about it oh okay according to her according to her right yes um and so in the beginning when they had the motions hearing or the status conference, or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. They said that they were not going to include anything about the book yes. in the <laughs> in the hearing. And um, they did. They got wide open into that book, um, which I think it needed to be said. Oh, it yeah. needed to be said. I don't she understand. She wanted to sell her books. Yes, I never, I didn't understand, oh my god, I can't talk. I didn't understand when we were at the status hearing why the judge was saying at that time that the book was not going to be included, because it yes. absolutely needed to be. That, that To me, that's like one of the main points about it, is the book. Right. Dick Harputlian was The court saying jester. That... <laughs> oh man, he seriously is, he's I hilarious. Know. Um, but he was, uh, saying, you said in your book that you knew he was guilty before the trial even started. And she was calling everything literary license. Like, and he I was like, that. oh, did you make it up? Right. She's like, no. I literary in, license. I know. I tuned in for part of her on the stand and I was like is she serious right now or like when she was saying that they went to Moselle and it was unspoken but they looked at each other and knew he was guilty right I was like what do you mean what do you mean yeah. it's a li- what is a literary whatever she called it literary license <laughs> like what do you mean girl you are claiming that you guys there was like an air about you that just knew he was guilty <laughs> It's just for the book. I just wanted to put it in the book. Girl, shut up. So then comes the verdict. And it was like a roller coaster for me because Justice Jean Toll was saying she was trying to answer two questions. And one was that did Becky Hill tamper with the jury and that answer was yes and she said that um becky was not completely credible and had fallen victim to the siren call of celebrity that's what she said about it and so i'm like oh my god he's gonna get a new trial yeah he's gonna get a new trial (laughs) and then her second question was, did it have an impact on the jury? And she said that it did not have an impact on the jury. And therefore, he would not be getting a new trial. I don't agree at all. At I all. so don't agree with that. No. Nope. And so, therefore, the trial only lasted one out of the three days that it was slated to so we were all ready to go to Columbia on Tuesday and then didn't because the trial was over. Oh, yeah. I guess we didn't. Yeah. We didn't state that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were planning on, on being there day two. And um, and then it happened and 
that brought a lot of weird emotions for me, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't, maybe I should have watched the actual verdict. I didn't. It's just you had texted me and been like, hey, I think it's over, but I'm still watching it. And I'm like, you know what? I can't wait to find out what's the verdict. Like, I literally Googled the verdict of it and I saw it and I went, oh my God. First of all, upset about the verdict itself. Regardless of what you believe, what he did it, he didn't do it. He deserved another trial. Point blank, period. Yeah. And then double upset knowing, like, I had my court outfit laid out. I washed my hair. I gassed up my tank. I was ready to wake up at 3, <laughs> 4 in the morning and drive to Columbia. And that was all taken away from me. Yep. I would have, you know, why couldn't they at least make it go two days? <laughs> I just can't believe she was like, oh, I've got my verdict already. Like, I was I thinking that she would at least be like, okay, let me review everything and I'll give you a verdict tomorrow. But I guess she just didn't want to um, call everybody back to court just well, to deliver her verdict. She should have done it for us. So, total opinion base, let me ask you. Do you think, perhaps, she went into this? Not, I mean... Obviously, she's a judge. She's got to be fair, this and that. I think she went into it with an idea of how maybe she thought she was going to give her verdict. Yeah. You know yeah, yeah, I do. And I think that's why it took her such little time. Yeah, because I feel like from the status conference, um, I don't want to say it was like obvious, but just her and Dick's back and forth kind of made me feel like she was already like, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. It did surprise me, though, because Creighton Waters objected to a lot of stuff. And oh. she kept saying, overruled, overruled, really? overruled. Yeah. Okay. I mean, when good Dick for her, was I guess. questioning Becky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I didn't get, I didn't see him questioning her. I saw the judge questioning her. Oh, really? Yeah. You need to watch it. I will. He's, he's you very need to entertaining. Watch it. He is entertaining. Yeah. And just, what she she's just a liar yes she is just a liar agreed and not to bring this up but it runs in the family because her son allegedly allegedly did some wiretapping allegedly (laughs) everybody in south carolina is crooked i guess honestly like do i actually love the state like i think i do i'm not crooked i don't think (laughs) podcast is called straight crooked oh Oh my god God. (laughs) hey and our initials are sc South Carolina. (laughs) (laughs) look at the color of my skin (laughs) my forehead vein's gonna pop out my mind is blown not the forehead vein the forehead vein <laughs> wow okay so we are straight crooked and we are sc that nothing is a coincidence <laughs> what if i just sat here the rest of the time nothing is a coincidence nothing is a coincidence like i'm just like short-circuited <laughs> <laughs> oh man so uh-huh. no more as far as we know, unless something wild happens, no more Alec Murdaugh in the media. He still has his appeal. Oh, I thought this, this is not the appeal. Am I done? Nope. They put his appeal on pause. Oh, for To this. see about getting a new trial. Yeah. Ooh, so there's a small chance. Small chance. I feel small. like it's even smaller than this chance was, probably. Yeah. Because an appeal is not a retrial. It's literally appealing the charges, right? Mm hmm. I would have rather, um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I would have rather a retrial. But it took a lot of time and a lot of resources. And I can understand why the state, well, the state especially doesn't want a new trial because yeah. there's also the chance that he could be found not guilty. Right. And that would totally screw them. Yeah. But I'm sure just all together, the money that they spent having to pull drawers away for six weeks like they don't want to do that again 
Of course not, but I mean, the government wastes money on so many other things, so yeah, at least right. give us like entertainment, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Is that messed up to say? It, I mean, it's entertaining to see. The circumstances are entertaining, but the spectacle of it all it is a spectacle mm -hmm. it definitely is a spectacle straight up circus oh my god and the funniest part to me oh my god what was it it was when the judge was asking they were about to get becky hill to come in but she was at like another building so dick oh. told her like it would take a minute for her to get there and the judge was like okay well should we break for lunch then like break for lunch early and dick said something like Yes, ma'am, I do require sustenance or some something just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like everybody laughed. This guy. <laughs> I mean, I they're dumb, but I like them. I yeah. like them both. His no, attorneys. I think it's super funny. Yeah. Anywho, that's all I have for today. And that was beautiful. Was it? And you did wonderful. I'm slacking because all I've been listening to on repeat is Rage Against the Machine. So it's very hard for me. Never mind, I have one, I have one, I have one. Okay. This week's song of the week is called Hell in the Hallway by Hannah Wickland. She has a fantastic voice. So you did our PSA. I'm going to keep that PSA is don't chop the heads off of cockroaches because they can still be living. Or if you do, if you do, smash the bodies too, if that's not too graphic. Yeah. I would never, I would just run from a cockroach because I don't like killing bugs. Not that I don't like them dead, I just don't like the crunch. Me either, but I would rather the crunch than living in fear for the rest of the night. Well, if it's not in my house, then I'm just going to leave. Oh. But... No, I would just, no. You know about my standoff with the spider, so I don't know that I would actually kill it rather than just track it or have someone else get it for me. <laughs> Not cool, man. Not cool. You've been listening to the Straight Crooked Podcast. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> what even is us? What oh, even is us? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense.